I'm not really interested in the uh, po politics of the day. I never really have been all my life. I don't care who gets in, who gets out. doesn't matter. I'm mostly concerned with uh, the destiny of the human race and the part that uh, the United States plays in the destiny of the human uh, things which are going on on the earth because it's involving all humans. And when you involve all humans on the earth, you got necessarily are going to involve the creator of the human race. Wherever it is we've come from and whoever it is is in charge of our evolution and our presence on this earth obviously is watching. It's very intelligent because humans are very intelligently designed. Uh, on, you know, which of course the Marxist, Leninist, Soviet, communist and all the other uh, prostitutes and prostitutes and all the other paid lackeys, uh, you know, would, would find fault with the idea that we were created. But there's no doubt in anybody's mind who has, uh, you know, has looked into this at any point knows that, you know, something as complex as a computer does not evolve itself. Uh, something as complex as a, as a finely tuned watch does not evolve itself. And so when you look at the human, uh, the human being, uh, it's, you know, it's way too complex, way, way, way too complex to have just evolved out of mud. But that's the kind of thing the prostitutes and the, uh, or prostitutes in the media, I call them prostitutes, uh, prostitutes who used, uh, prostitutes, you know, sell their body, but the prostitutes sell their soul. They sell, tr they sell out the truth. They sell out for money. And I have no respect for the American media whatsoever. All they do is take their money and drive fancy cars and live high because they work for their masters who rape our country and our people. And they pay these prostitutes and these uh, professors and all the other lackeys who don't mind crawling on their knees to pick up their check. And so um, I think it's an idea whose time has come. I started talking about uh, you know all of this menagerie going on some uh, 56 years ago, maybe going on 57 years ago now, about the... Uh, possibility that our world is being conspired against by wealthy and powerful people in high places. And so it, it has finally come all the way around to where now it's overwhelming and obvious. When I started talking about it back in 1960, that's a long time ago in 1960, where I started talking about and doing lectures on uh, secret societies and fraternal orders and all of the dark uh, criminality, white collar crime and criminality going on in government. I had no idea in the world at that time how really dark the thing really is. But after looking at it for 57 years, I pretty well have a handle on how bad the situation is. So with this coming of the new president, again, I don't care. I'm not for or against anybody. But uh, I, I do feel the need to at least clarify a few things which I've been looking at for almost 60 years. I might, you know, I could tell you now, save you 60 years of trying to figure it out. Uh, for many, many years, since the turn of the century, back turn of the century, uh, back in 1900, uh, there has been a concerted effort on the part of what we call Ivy League universities and colleges and news papers, magazines, uh, television, uh, big television shows like uh, Discovery and, and uh, all of the big television networks especially, and especially the networks with their news at night, nightly news. There has been, as far back as 1900, a concerted effort to uneducate the American people because the more ignorant you are, the easier it is for con men to con you. 
it's very difficult to con somebody who has a, you know, uh, is five times smarter than you are and who has doctors and PhDs by their name, and they're not going to be that easily uh, uh, mis misled. But if you can keep the people all, to all together, keep the people ignorant, ill-informed, and unread, and uh, and do it in such a way that they don't know that they're being dumbed down, eventually <clears throat> there will come a time when the entire country will uh, have lost its ability to think. And so my friend Dick Gregory always said, colleges and schools uh, do not, they, they teach you what to think. They don't teach you how to think. And uh, it was, I think it was uh, Bertrand Russell who said something to the effect that, I was just reading that lately. Bertrand Russell said that, um, uh, men, are, humans are born ignorant, but you must go to school to be really stupid. And I thought that's a that's a uh, uh, and, uh, that is a real truth. You know, all humans are born ignorant, but uh, you know you don't stay that way. The way the divine creator created our brains, we are inquisitive and start to read and study and question and educate yourself. Uh, that's the idea. No, today, the governmental systems, the international monetary elites of the world who now claim that they own the human race, they set up what they call schools. And the schools are not to educate you, but to prepare you to be in compliance with the system which is built up around you. So mostly in school, they teach you how to jump and what to kiss and how to uh, react to uh, authority. And uh, and then they, you will see like a good dog, like Pavlov's dog, uh, if you get good grades and you, and you open your top of your head and take your brain out and just uh, repeat what you are being told by the uh, prostitutes and by the, uh, the teachers, and by the university uh, faculty, if you you know if you go along with the program, so to speak, then you will get a work permit. Uh, it's called a, you know it's called a work permit because it gives you the op opportunity now to go out and say, well, I have a PhD and I have a doctorate in this or that, and uh, and therefore you can get a job, which is a work permit. That's all. And so that's why the system always promotes those who have a work permit, because they have been taught what to say, what to think, and, and you know, what to kiss and when. So I've watched this stuff for almost 60 years now, and I've, I've heard all the stories. And so many of the stories and things which are, we are hearing today, <clears throat> I heard 60 years ago. But the problem is when young people are coming into the world, they don't know what has been before. I mean, they got history lesson, but that's, you know, that, that's for whatever it's worth is history. But for people who are actually there today, uh, we don't even talk about it in schools at all. But if anybody brings up the subject, for instance, of uh, what was it like in uh, in the Soviet Union living under communism in the 40s, 30s, 40s, and 50s? What was it like living under Marxist, Leninist, Soviet communism? What was it like living then in the Soviet Union and China today? <clears throat> well, if you go back and listen to the people who are still alive, some of them are still alive today, very old, but they were there and they lived under the regime of communism in the Soviet Union. And when you talk to them, <clears throat> or if you're talking to some very old couples that are still alive who actually were in Berlin under the Nazi regime, talk to the people who were there. Don't worry about reading a book right now. Talk to the actual guy on the street who lived there under those regimes and tell you what he lived through, how he saw it, and then you begin to get a good idea about what, what uh, life under the Soviet communist system really was. 
the way it really worked. <clears throat> and the corruption beyond belief that even today all over the world, and Russians in particular, mock and laugh at the government of the Soviet Union because it was so corrupt. <clears throat> and so, uh, but you see, I heard all of this some 60 years ago, and it was very interesting. And I started studying, studying the very subject of Marxist philosophy, communist theology, etc., and, uh, well, with that background, I look at the world today, and that's what America is. It's a Soviet communist operation. And the people of America have no idea what those words even mean. Why? Because they've been watching basketball so long, they have been entertained by Hollywood so long, that they really have no idea in the world, unless they talk to some 90-year-old a couple that were around, you know, that were there when the stuff was happening back in the Soviet Union or back in Nazi Germany, talk to the people who were there, eyewitnesses. They didn't read a book and tell you, no, talk to the people who were there. Remember, when you're reading a, a history book, <clears throat> always go to the first page and see who publishes that book, what publishing company publishes that book and then go on the stock market or go to the reference works and see who owns that that, that publishing house that published that uh, that history book which I did I used to do that all the time and so many times I would find that the publisher of these history books that, that glorified the Soviet Union glorified China how wonderful the people's paradise was uh, you know, this was 40 and 50 years ago. I would, I would go and see who owns the publishing company. And it, many times it turned out to be the Rockefeller Brothers Trust Fund who owns the publishing house. Or the J. Paul Getty Company. Or the, uh, or the, uh, or what is it? The Mellon Company. And then you find out the publishing, big publishing houses are owned by People like the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, all the international bankers own the publishing houses that publish the books that tell you the BS. And so uh, it didn't take me long, some 60 years ago, to figure out, you know, it's, it's just a business here, the business of bullshitting the world, and Americans in particular. So I started looking at who is publishing these books and what is the real truth? And so I began talking to people uh, who were there in Germany and in Russia and in communist China. And what they would what they would tell me was totally, totally different than what the glorious reports by the uh, Rockefeller Brothers Trust Fund uh, was telling people in schools and teaching them. And what uh, what happened at that time? We're talking about 60, 70 years ago. Uh, the world communist movement began moving into America through the educational system. And all of this is all documented. It, I mean, most people who are well aware of American history know all of this, but I'm just, I'm just parousing over some of the history that most people are not aware of today. But um, one thing that pops up in my mind that I really want people to understand is that Obama came out of Chicago. Well, so did Al Capone. So did the organized uh, syndicates, uh, the Jewish syndicates, the mafia, the Lucuza Nostra, uh, the American outfits, we would call the outfits. Um, you know, Al Capone made Chicago famous. Why? Because at one time, uh, going back into the 20s, 20s, 30s, and 40s, 1940s, uh, when I was born, Al Capone and the mob controlled uh, Chicago. And Chicago was famous around the world for, uh, for its organized crime, its criminal syndicates. Even the mayor and the city hall were on the take. And there's all kinds of documentaries about this on, tel on, on television and YouTube today. Go on to YouTube and look up, uh, you know, organized crime in America. 
And there's all kinds of documentaries telling you about how really disgusting and filthy the political system was, the organized, organized criminal system was in Chicago. But what a lot of people don't know, I do, because I'm 76 years old, and I damn well remember it. But most people today haven't spent 76 years on, on this earth looking at the kind of things I am. But I remember, and you can go on the web and, and clarify it for yourself, that along with organized crime and the syndicates and the Al Capone and the drug dealers and all of the uh, professional criminal outfits coming out of Chicago, New York, and uh, and uh, Detroit, and all of those old, you know, we get a we get a glimpse of what it was like in the movie Godfather or uh, Goodfellas. Those are good, great movies, but they were important movies, especially just to give you an idea about what the world and, and Chicago and America was really like way back when. A lot of uh, anybody in my audience is 70 and 80 and 90 years old. They don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, America was filled with organized crime, criminal syndicates. Um, so understanding that and understanding that uh, Chicago played the leading role in organized crime, uh, you also need to know with that something I know and the old and the old school people, all the old guys listening to me know, is that uh, they had a partner in crime. Usually criminals do have partners in crime. And organized crime in Chicago in particular uh, was well known that there was a, another component to organized crime. And you could go on the web and check all this out and watch the documentaries. The organized crime in Chicago and, and, and you know, in and, and, and America continually was the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party was a criminal outfit going all the way back to before 1900. If you go back into the history of America, you will see where the uh, Democratic Party, what we call Democratic Party, came from. Uh, a great book on that subject was, uh, I've talked about it many times, was Fire in the Minds of Men by James Billington. It's on my website and my research website. So I'll talk about that in a few minutes. But in the book, Fire and the Minds of Men, which incidentally is on the web for, for free e-book e download, uh, Fire and the Minds of Men, James Billington. James Billington happens to be today the chief librarian for the Library of Congress. So you don't get any more mainstream uh, than that, being the li chief librarian for the Library of Congress. And he wrote a book called Fire in the Minds of Men where he explained uh, where the Democratic Party came from. And it goes back to the secret societies in Europe and the organized crime in Europe and how organized crime came to America. It came to uh, Europe. It went into Russia and, uh, and overthrew the Russian government, went into China and overthrew the, the Chinese government. And it's been, you know, been moving around the world, overthrowing governments, killing people, murdering people. The Democratic Party is a dirty, dirty criminal outfit. Go on the web, go on YouTube, or go to your library and read the, the Democratic Party and organized crime. There are tons of books and videos and documentaries talking about the organization of organized crime and organized Democratic Party, Democratic Party. And so when I see people like Obama and all the others who have come out of the Chicago area who are, you know, I know the history of Chicago. I know the history of the connection between organized crime, bloodletting, murder in, in Chicago, people dying on the streets, being murdered by the organized crime and the organized uh, Democratic Party. The Democratic Party is the filthiest organization on the planet Earth, period. It is directly connected to what we call Marxist-Leninist communism. 
And if you if you study the the theology and the philosophy of Marxist Leninism that was practiced you know, around the world in communist governments, you will see, as I have said to you before, you will see that all communist governments officially are referred to as people's democratic republics. Uh, China is the people's democratic republic of China. The Soviet Union was called the people's democratic republic of the Soviet Union. Uh, we have the People's Democratic Republic of Cuba, the People's Democratic Republic of North Korea. It's the People's Democratic Republic of this, People's Democratic Republic for that. All of them are Marxist-Leninist Soviet communist operations. So today we have in America the People's Democratic Party. Wake up, democratic, read the word. Go back and look at the etymology of the word and the concept of democracy. And you will see that democracy is not a people's democracy. It is a corporate democracy. A corporate democracy today is referred to correctly as communism. This is why today we don't have Americans we have the gay the gay the gay community we have the the uh the hispanic community we have the uh you know we have this community the black community oh, we we are divided into communities which gives us our word communism from our commune or communism we get our community and so we're being divided. Well, that's the old communist way, dividing and conquer. So you divide the blacks from whites, you divide the gays from the straights, you divide the, the Jews from the Arabs, you divide people and keep dividing them, and now you have chaos. And out of chaos, we know that the uh, secret societies of Europe said uh, it requires chaos, to break a new order. It's called Ordo Ob Chao. Do some research on all of this stuff and you'll find out that this old man, uh, what sounds like he's rattling off, is actually telling you the real history of America, of Chicago, of the Democratic Party, of the Mafia, La Cosa Nostra, all the Jewish syndicates out of Chicago and Los Angeles, all of the dirty, filthy, criminal organizations which are ripping the people off. They call them banks uh, and bankers, and the bankers are financing the politicians. Politicians are crawling on their knees to the bankers, and the whole of America has become a cesspool of organized crime. We call it the, uh, we call it democracy. No, it's not democracy. It's organized crime. So that's why today people who have been born and raised, I mean, I'm not complaining about them, but people who have been born and raised and know nothing else but Marxist communism, that's all they have been taught in school, that's all they have seen on, on television, uh, news, that's what they're being fed every day from colleges, universities, uh, and they don't mind telling you. Uh, universities don't mind telling you that they're teaching Marxist, Leninist, Soviet communism in the universities and colleges and schools and high schools, uh, and they're doing it in such a way that you're not supposed to know it. But if you've studied the subject, which I have for many years, you will begin to see what's really going on in America today. This is why there are so many uh, demonstrations in the streets today, because of Trump being a uh, new president, because uh, Newt Gingrich, I think, was probably said it the best. Uh, go on the web, if you're clever with the web and you know how to find things on on, uh, on YouTube, find the quote uh, that Newt Gingrich, a few months, six months, or maybe seven months ago, uh, Newt Gingrich was asked about his feelings about Trump and the Newt Gingrich was the Speaker of the House one t at one time, and Newt Gingrich said, "quote something to this effect." He said that Washington D.C. is scared to death of Trump, 
They are scared to death of this man. And, try, and, and Gidrich said, the reason why Washington, D.C. is so upset with him is because he is not a member of the secret society that owns and runs America. And they know he's not a player. He's not part of the secret society that runs America. That's what Newt Gingrich said on the air publicly. Go back, go on YouTube and find it and watch it. So Newt Gingrich was only telling you what we should have already known, that America is being run by a secret society, a fraternal order, and their whole objective is to dis, dis, dissemble, break down, and ultimately destroy the one problem they've had in world domination, the one problem they've had in dominating the whole world in one enormous communist uh, concentration camp for the wealthy to put all of the poor working class people into a concentration camp of labor and uh, and suck off the uh, the labor and the wealth of the common people uh it's called it's called uh communism incidentally you need to remember that uh when the soviet communist party was first being founded i remember because i'm 76 years old and i was looking at it as a young man um, you may not know this but the when the soviet union was being founded uh, back in the 1900s, 1914, right around there, when they were founding the new communist regime in Russia. Um, the communists were, of course, financed by New York and London. The bankers in New York and London and uh, the City Core Bank of Chicago and, and Chase Manhattan Bank and uh, Morgan Guarantee Trust of Philadelphia and uh, other big banking consortiums in America were quietly sending money to the Communist Party in the Soviet Union for a very specific reason, because communism had no money. They had a silly-ass idea about how to rape uh, the Russian people and, and bring in a, a communist prison to Russian people, but they didn't have any money. And so uh, it was brought out, uh, you know, many years ago. It was really out there in the news when the, when the news people were more honest in telling you the truth. There were all kinds of articles in magazines and newspapers about how the United States and London were financing the, the Soviet Union. They were sending money and, and drugs and uh, medical supplies and oil and uh, all the accoutrements which are needed for government, uh, especially food, wheat, uh, especially, you know, foods in particular, and oil and gas and money. All of this was going to the Soviet Communist Party, which was starving, which had nothing. There were just a bunch of ragtail, uh, uh, ill-informed, ignorant uh, revolutionaries that, uh, wanted to take over the government, and so the Americans' uh, system and the British system were financing uh, the whole operation for the communists to take over Russia. Why? Because Russia had so many uh, natural resources, and and so the the British and American um, system wanted to control the world. If they could control Russia from there, they could go to China. From China, they go to Cuba, North Korea, and ultimately the whole world would be communist without knowing that it's the Americans and the British that own the whole damn thing. They own it all. They bought it all a long time ago. And in regard to that, there was a magazine, an extraordinarily fascinating magazine, the kind of which you do not see today ever, and it was called Argosy. You could go on the web and look up the, the word Argosy, and Argosy magazine. Argosy magazine, this is when I was a kid growing up, uh, had all kinds of extraordinarily uh, controversial subjects that they would deal with every month in their magazine, all kinds of reporting on 
secret societies and crime and syndicates and uh, and fascinating stuff about world politics and world government. Uh, Argosy Magazine was an incredibly fascinating uh, magazine. Well, in one of their magazines, the Argosy Magazine, I had at one time, and it's still out there. You can, I think, you can still buy back copies. But there was an article in Argosy Magazine back in the 40s that talked about how the communists needed money so bad they were broke, they couldn't earn a. There was no way for them to provide the people of Russia. Uh, with food and work because they had no money themselves. And so that's why they didn't mind killing off their own people because you, you, have, you might as well kill them off. You can't feed them. You can't provide them with a job. They are of no view. They are of no value because they have no education. You've kept them stupid. So I guess the only thing to do is just get rid of them. So that's why the Russian government started starving and killing its own population because they couldn't feed them. They couldn't support them. Why? Because communism never been able to support anybody. Thank God we got bankers in England and America who will send money and food and keep you going. But this Argosy magazine had an article talking about how the new, uh, how the Federal Reserve the Federal Reserve was sending money, mil millions of dollars, to the Soviet Communist Party quietly. But it became very dangerous for the Federal Reserve to do that because there were politicians in Washington, D.C., and smart people in America that started hearing about this, that the Federal Reserve is financing communism in the Soviet Union. What's that all about? So in order to quiet down the the hysteria, uh, they, the, the Federal Reserve came up with a great idea, and I remember it, reading about it in Argosy Magazine. What they did, according to this article, was that they sent the plates. They sent the plates to the 20s and 50s and 100s and, uh, uh, you know, money plates that the Federal Reserve used. They sent the plates to the Soviet Union for the communists to run off their own money. So instead of uh, uh, the Federal Reserve, uh, you know, sending money straight to the Russian Communist Party, it was decided they'd be better if we just quietly mail them and send them over the plates and let them run off the, uh, send them the paper and, and the ink and whatever, and let them run off their own uh, American money so that they could just run that stuff off all day and all night and have plenty of money to pay everybody to kill and rape and plunder and kill all their rev and, and finance all the revolutionaries, and they can buy food now and buy oil. And so the Federal Reserve was financing directly the Communist Party of the Soviet Union, and the big banks here in America, along with the big corporations like Ford Motor Company, General Motors, Chrysler, uh, Eli Lilly Glass, all of the major big corporations. Uh, were also sending, uh, materials to the Soviet Union to finance and to help the Communist Party. So what I'm saying is if you really do your homework, you will find that the Soviet Communist system that we call today the People's Democratic Republic, you will find that the Democratic Party, uh, and the, and the um, organized crime out of Chicago, New York, uh, all of a sudden you begin to see that this whole idea of a democracy in the Democratic Party is not based on some wonderful idea of the rule of the people. No, the people have no power at all, period. In America, you have no power. You have to have a license and a permit, and you have to ask permission, <clears throat> and the government can take anything, including your life. And so we don't have any freedoms anymore. And the reason why is because it's a democracy. And democracy is a word, as I said, James Billington pointed out in his book, democracy is just another name for Marxist, Leninist, Soviet communism. So the bottom line is that when I see Obama coming out of the old Marxist, Leninist, Soviet 
operation using the old Soviet communist terms, using the old Soviet Marxist-Leninist symbols and emblems, and understanding who's uh, financing and organizing and directing him from behind the scenes, the old Soviet communists, who, of the old school, who came to America like the Nazis during the 40s. They came to America. The Nazis became known as, as, uh, as uh, Republicans, and the communists became, came over here and started joining the, the, uh, the Democratic Party. So when I see this government cram filled with Marxist, Leninist, Soviet, communist bullshit, and the American people have no idea in the world what is going on. And so there's this war going on uh, between the Republicans, which are Nazi, SS Gestapo Nazis, uh, and there are a few, thank God, there are a few real Americans who happen by chance to be Republicans. And they are real Americans. And there's only a few, but they are very good people who know what's going on. But the uh, overwhelming amount, amount of people in the Republican Party don't even realize they're working for Nazi causes. But there, are, as I said, there's some really good people in the Republican Party. And I know there has to be somebody I don't know who it would be right now because I don't follow politics that close anyway. <clears throat> but I don't, I'm sure there must be somebody, uh, who can relate to being an American and America as it was founded in the Democratic Party. I don't know who that would be because every Democrat I hear by, you know, uh, is mouthing the same old stuff I heard 60 years ago. The same old terms, the same catchphrases. Uh, it's, it's just amazing how much people don't know about this government. So having said that, there's so many other things I want to talk about. But having said that, just understand the reason why there's so much uh, activity in the streets and dem demonstrations from the Democrats, demonstrations. Demonstrations are uprisings in the street so when you see thousands of people burning cars and you know and rioting we call it a demonstration <clears throat> why because they're demonstrating because why because they are democrats they have been taught in schools unknown to them but they've been taught in schools how to overthrow a government and so they have no education. Most of them, most of the Democrat and most of the people rioting in the streets remind me of uh, old Christmas tree lights. Half of them don't work and the other half are not that bright. So when I see all of this Marxist, Leninist, communism on one side and the, and the Nazism on the other side, and then there's a few good Americans in government who are trying to straighten this mess out, I understand now what's going on in the streets of America and who these people really are. And unfortunately, our people, our youth and our people have been brought up to understand uh, the Marxist philosophy of, you know, feed yourself and get the government to give you everything. And you don't have to work. You don't have to do nothing. That's all Marxist communism. So that's what I have to say about the Democratic Party. They're all a bunch of communists and all a bunch of fascists. And the whole damn butt should be put under arrest for treason. So that's my view. That's my opinion. And so from there, I want to talk about, uh, I don't care about what's going on right now. I'm just curious to see what's going to happen in this country because it looks like somebody is trying to reestablish uh, Americanism in America. Well, for 100 years, America has been dominated by communists and Nazis. So now somebody is trying to reestablish Americanism, and boy, both sides, especially the Democrat side, is not happy with that. My God, they've been working hard for over 100 years being fed by American banks and American money to overthrow the world system of freedom. And now they are confronted with somebody who's talking about being an American. My God, they can't handle that. So that's what I see is happening. I mean, I'm just an old man giving you my opinion, but I've been watching this stuff before most of my audience was even born. I know what's going on. 
That's why you're having all the rioting and demonstrations in the streets, is because the whole of America has been misled through the through schools and universities and news organizations, magazines, entertainment, to buy into the Soviet communist system. And now that system is being disrupted, and that's why everybody's so pissed out in the street, because they're afraid that their free meal is over. And you have to go back to being Americans again. So that's it. That's my feeling about the uh, disgusting uh, uh, position we Americans, we real Americans who care about our country are in. Because I said it before and I'll say it again. Knowledge is power. And that's why the people of America have no power to do anything because they have no knowledge of how this stuff works. You need to go back and talk to the old guys, the old school, the old guys, the great grandfathers who were there in the Communist Party Europe. They were there under Marxist Leninism. They were there under the Nazi regime. Talk to the old guys. They're, they are the ones that can tell you what the real story is. And all of them will tell you the same thing they saw in Soviet Communist Russia is exactly what they're seeing today in America. The only difference is the Americans have a lot of fat that they have been living on. They, you know, the communists are living on the fat of the land. Americans have been so uh, uh, hardworking and built up such an empire that uh, you know now the, the the criminals can suck the tit of America and suck all the the vitality and money and and value out of the American system and leave the Americans uh, you know broke. Uh, uh, you know, subject to defeat by a foreign power, it's incredible. It's horrible what has happened to our country. And the Marxists and the communists today, we call them Democrats, are out in the streets because they know this is serious business. They may be out of business real soon. My God, I hope to hell they are. I would love to see an expose done on the Democratic Party and who they really are and their connections to organized crime in America and Europe and secret societies of criminals who finance the Democratic Party. So that's my take on the modern-day world of American politics.